last part of this section is super important. A lot of the foundations of algebra are built off of this one little concept, the least common multiple, or LCM, you'll hear us say a lot. Um, so, what is it, the least common multiple between some numbers? How do we find it? What does it mean? So, least common multiples are used to do what in algebra? We need to have common denominators to be able to add and subtract with fraction notation. So with fractions, we need to have common denominators to be able to combine them. So how do we find those common denominators? And if I can help it, I'm going to work with the smallest thing that's common, so I don't have to deal with large number numbers. So one thing to note, the multiples of a number all have that number as a factor. Feels pretty arbitrary in that language, but we have a good example. So the multiples of 2 you have written out. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, it continues on for forever. And each of those factors, each of those numbers, are all divisible by 2, what we started off with. So those of them, those are all divisible by 2. Kind of the factor that we started and built off of. Yeah, it should be. All of those factors should be divisible by that number that we started with. So let's just find the common multiples of 2 and 3. Again, we can find visually what the least common multiple is. It's a pain in the butt, but we can do it. So starting with 2, let's just write some of its multiples. So I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, I'll just stop there. Continues on. Infinitely long. All right, and if I start with 3, what are its multiples? I've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, I'm just going to stop there. Alright, so just looking between them, what are the common multiples that they share? So, let's start from the beginning. First one that they share in common is 6. What else? Nope, nope, 12. They share that one in common. 14, 16, 18 is in both of those lists. And 24. And they have a lot more common factors, common multiples. But we just stop there, because what's the point? So we want to find the least or the smallest of those common multiples. So between 2 and 3, what is its least common multiple? So the smallest one that they share in common is 6. So we abbreviate this term, least common multiple, oftentimes as LCM. So you'll see that a lot. So think, what does the least common multiple have to be able to do? What's the point of using the least common multiple? So if I take 6, it is both a multiple of 3 and of 2. So if I take 6 and divide it by either one of these, I'm going to get a whole number out. So the least common multiple is divided by both 2 and 3 with no remainder. We've designed it to work that way. So it has to be divided by both 2 and 3 with no remainder. So we're only dealing with whole numbers. So how do we find the LCM without having to write out every single multiple of whatever numbers we're trying to look at? So there's two different ways that we can go about it. The book has one way that they teach. I really don't like it. I don't think it's practical. And then I'm going to present to you another way and kind of give it in the name of building. But first, 
if you're more comfortable with the book's way, you could run with that. Or if you're more comfortable with the way that I'm going to introduce to you, um, I prefer if you get more comfortable with that one because I think it'll help you later on in your math career, but both of them will work. So, the book's way, we first have to find the prime factorizations. So, we, first example, find least common multiple of 40 and 100. What is the LCM of those two? So, we want to break them into the prime factorizations. We worked with those two numbers in the previous two parts of this section. We already know 40 is broken up into 2 and 5, those factors. 100 is 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. You can look back at your, at your worksheet if you forget how to break it up. And what the book says to do, least common multiple, how do we find it? We want to take each factor the greatest number of times it shows up between uh, the numbers that we're inspecting. So, in 40, how many factors of 2 do I have? 1, 2, 3. And in 100, how many factors of 2 do I have? 2. So, the greatest number of times that 2 shows up between the two numbers is 3. So, I need to take 3 factors of 2 into account in my least common multiple. So, what other factors do we have involved? 5. Greatest number of times that 5 shows up between the two is down here. I've got two factors of 5 in 100 and only one in 40. So, the greatest number of times that 5 shows up is twice. So, Least common multiple between 40 and 100 is going to be 200. So you take each factor the greatest number of times that it shows up between the numbers you're looking between. Okay, so that's one way. It'll get us there. But I think another way is a little bit more practical. So building. We still want to start with one number's prime factorization. So we have each of them available to us here. I'm going to start with 40. My least common multiple has to be divisible by both of these numbers. Okay. So 200, I could divide that by 40, get a whole number out, by 100, get a whole number out. That's the whole point. So my least common multiple has to have at least a factor of 40 in it because it has to be divisible by 40. So I'm going to start with 40's factorization. 40's factorization. My least common multiple has to be divisible by what I'm starting with. So I'm just going to pick 40. So its factors are given to us. And we want to build from there and ask, what factors is my LCM missing that this other one still has? So what haven't I taken into account? So I've got three factors of two in my LCM that I've taken into account. Do I need any more? Have I taken care of the other factors of two and 100? Yeah, those are already lying inside of my LCM. I took care of those. What else? I've taken care of one factor of five from the other number I'm comparing with. But what do I need? So what is this one missing that this other one has? Another factor of 5. So we've taken into account all of the numbers in both of them. So what's our LCM in this case? If we build it in that way, still at 200, which is what we had before. So we always ask that question, what is this one missing? that the other one has? What do I need to build and move farther with? All right, so whichever method you're more comfortable with, you can run with. I'm going to stick with that building. It's going to help you when you start to add and subtract um, expressions and not just numbers. So the first one that we'll do together, finding in the least common multiple of 27, 90, and 84. 
So first of all, we want to break it up into its prime factorization so we can look at it and kind of in its broken down level. So how do you want to start breaking up 27? I'm going to start with 9 times 3. 3 is prime. 9 we can break up farther into 3 and 3. Each of those are prime. So we're done there. Tree can't break down any farther. How do you want to start off breaking up 90? Got a lot of different options. 2 and 45, I'm going to go with 9 and 10. And again, neither are prime. We've got to keep breaking down until we get to some primes. And lastly, 84. How do we want to break that one up to start off? I'm going to say 21 and 4. Well, you can start with it whatever you want. We'll get to the same primes. So 21 can be broken up into 7 and 3, each of which are prime. 4, 2 and 2. All right, so what are we looking at? I like to write them out in a nice format. 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. 90 is 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. 84 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. So again, least common multiple has to be divisible by 27, 90, and 84. So I could start with whichever one I want. I'm just going to take the first one, 27. Take that into account into my least common multiple because it has to be divisible by 27. Now, let's start asking, what is my LCM missing that the next factor has? What haven't we taken into account? So, I've got three factors of three. What am I missing here that this one has? We need another factor of two and another factor of five. All right. Then we want to look. We're looking between three numbers, not just two. So, what is my LCM missing? What factor that this one has? What haven't we taken into account? So, what are we missing? Another factor of 2. We already share another 2 in common. We already share a 3 in common. I'm missing a factor of 7. So, really big number. Could you imagine writing these out, the multiples, until you got to 3,700? And 80. No thanks. Or again, you could go through and ask, okay? Greatest number of times that 3 shows up between each of them. 3. I need to take 3 factors of 3. Greatest number of times that 2 shows up between all of them. 2. I need those 2 factors. Greatest number of times that 5 shows up. Once. Greatest number of times that 7 shows up between them. Once. We need one factor there. So again, either method works. I just encourage you to build them. It'll help you later on. Next, 18. Please call them multiple. 18 and 27. We want to break it up in two. It's primes. I'm going to start here. Two is prime. Done with him. Nine is three and three. Those are both prime. How do we want to break up? 27. I'm going to say 9 and 3. 3 is prime. 9 is not. Break it down until you get, break it down until you get to primes everywhere. And let's write them in a nice form. I like to see it written out, displayed in ascending order. 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. So let's build. What is my LCM? Has to be divisible by both 27 and 18. So start with whatever one you want. I'm going to start with 18. It's factors. And we want to ask, what is my LCM missing that this other factor has? So what haven't we taken into account? I've got two factors of three. I'm missing one more. I need another factor of three. And we've already compared between the two. So, what is my least common multiple? What are we looking at? Multiplying all together, 18 times 3. 
but to four. Okay. So whichever method you're comfortable with, take those last two tries. Find the least common multiple of eight and nine, and the least common multiple between 12 and 24. So each of those two examples are some special cases that happen. So let's just start with the first one. How did you break up eight? How did you break up nine? It doesn't really matter how you begin. Four and two, two and two, everything's prime. And nine is three and three, everything's prime. So looking at eight and nine, we're writing them out in their multiples. Three factors of two, two factors of three. So again, least common multiple has to be divisible by eight and nine. So if I just start with one of them, I want to ask, what is this one missing that the other one has? What haven't I taken into account? Factors of three. Or you could have started with nine, having that written, and then asking, what is my LCM missing that this other factor has? Three factors of two. So, least common multiple in that case is what? 72. So, what did you notice? Nine times eight is 72. So, sometimes the least common multiple is just multiplying the two together. Some cases are funny like that. And what did you notice about the second one? Just starting off, what do you notice about 12 and 24? 12 is a factor of 24. It goes into 24 evenly. So the least common between these two is going to be what? 24, it should be anyway, because I can divide 24 by 24, get out one, a whole number, or 24 divided by 12, and I get out a whole number. But let's just prove it algebraically. So break down 12. I'm going to start with 6 and 2, and I'll get 3 and 2 out of 6. All of those are prime. 24, again, doesn't matter. I'm going to pick 12 and 2. Keep going. Keep going till everything's prime. So 12 I can write as 2 times 2 times 3. 24, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So let's build that LCM. I'm going to start with 12, because my least common multiple has to be divisible by that. So what is my LCM missing that my other one has? Another factor of 2. Am I missing anything else? No. So again, what's our least common multiple? 24. So sometimes it works out that way, where our least common multiple is actually multiplying the two together, or one is a multiple of another, and the larger one is going to be our least common. Either way, get comfortable with the least common multiples, because you will see these popping up everywhere in math after this point. All right, get started on that homework.